Hey everybody, I'm Stormsteel, and today I'd like to go a little bit more in depth into weapon smithing in Crowfall, specifically your optional components and appearances for your weapons. Before we get started, just a friendly reminder that I stream Crowfall every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night. Link in the description below. If you've got any questions about Crowfall or just want to talk about it, make sure to come over to my stream and I'd be happy to help you there. All right, so at this point, I'm going to assume you've watched my Weaponsmithing Basics video and you've got your disciplines and your passive skills all set up and ready to start crafting. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my Weaponsmithing Basics video in the description below. So today we're going to build a two-handed weapon instead of a one-handed weapon, which takes a bit more resources since your character can only wield one versus wielding two one-handed weapons. First off, I'm on the test server on patch 6.1 and I gotta say, this looks amazing. I'm able to turn my graphic settings all the way up and still be getting 60 FPS in the temple. Granted, it's in the temple and not a lot of people are on the server, but look at this guys. Doesn't this look amazing? It looks amazing. Moving on. So just like in the Weaponsmithing's Basics video, I need to start by making my metal bars in order to produce the components for the weapon. In this 6.1 patch coming up that's on the test server, you'll notice here that I can actually pre-select the quantity of metal bars I want to make. You can do this with any of the, the components now. They call it ore processing now. You can see I can do it with any of these components. So for the metal bars, I know for a two-handed weapon, I'm going to need 10. I double-checked this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my quantity of 10. There we go. So I'll need 30 of each kind of ore that I decide to put in and 60 coal. They really raised the price on coal here. But I've got the 60 coal and I looked it up ahead of time and on the Winter Blades crafting sheet, which will also be linked in the description below, that what I want on my weapon is attack power and armor, armor penetration slashing so that I can make a great axe for my pit, for my uh, champion, for my, it would be an alpha warrior champion. So I'm gonna go silver, silver, tin, and boom, I've got 10 metal bars. Another thing they made it do is it stacks now. The metal bars stack. They don't each take up a, a slot in your inventory anymore. You'll also notice that I make the item and I no longer go through experimentation process. That's so that they can stack now. These, these metal bars no longer have a serial number. They're not a unique item anymore. So this is really cool for a lot of reasons. And now they stack. So I can get to making the components for my weapon. But now that I'm going to get into experimentation, there's something I want to talk about first, which is the food that you want to have on yourself as a crafter. Here in the top left corner of my inventory, you can see I've got two items. I've got bond tippers and sumptuous pot pies. These each do very different, but very important things. Bond tippers add 15 points to my experimentation, which is pretty big. I'll show you the difference in a second when we get crafting. The sumptuous pot pie, if you get a chance to read this, says increases general crafting experimentation by one. Now, general crafting or basic crafting stats, you only receive 25% of those in your advanced crafting, such as blacksmithing or woodworking, the more advanced things. But this is still a notable improvement. We can see the effect, actually, if I go to my details on the crafting tab, I'll go down to my experimentation points. Let's just look at general crafting. I've got seven general crafting. My blacksmithing experimentation points is 17.1. I'll go ahead and eat the sumptuous pot pie. And boom, now I've got eight general crafting and my blacksmithing went up to 17.35. So that actually went up by 0.25 as, as I said it would, 25% of one, 0.25. So that does not make a difference currently for me since I was just over the 17 mark. But if I were at say 17.75 experimentation points, that pot pie would bump me up to 18 points. So you don't always need to use this, but it's important to keep track of just where that decimal is on your experimentation points. So you know if you need it to give you that extra point. All right, moving on to the actual crafting. I'm gonna make one component without the bond tipper and one with. And actually, if you look at my top right of my screen, you can see I have the dined buff. That dined buff is the sumptuous pot pie buff. So let's go ahead and get into the blacksmithing window again. I've got my 10 metal bars ready to go. Let's go down to two-handed weapon components. Uh, actually, let's see first in advanced weapons what I need to make my great axe. So look at great axe, I'll need a weapon hilt great a weapon head great axe and a weapon shaft medium. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the, the hilt and the shaft without you guys having to watch and then we'll get into the optional components and the uh, weapon skin. Okay, so I have now made the medium metal shaft and the great weapon hilt. These are two of those components I needed. The last component I need, if I go into blacksmithing, advanced weapons, look at 
my uh, great axe again. The last one that I needed was the weapon head great axe for the uh, needed components, and then we'll get into the optional components. So I'm going to need a head mold for that. So I'm on the test server, so I can just pick it up for free. Normally, though, on the uh, live server, you'll have to go to this vendor here with the hammer and anvil over his head. Ooh, looks like they've added gold prices over the actual items themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my great axe head mold. I'm going to grab the weapon weight because that's one of the optional components that we're going to talk about later. And here, these scrolls at the bottom, move that up so you can see it, these scrolls at the bottom, these are your appearance compendiums. You actually attach these to the weapon head mold, and that's what gives your weapon the appearance skin that you want. So I've decided beforehand that I'm actually going to make a centaur appearance. They're based on the races, um, and so you'll have to see which race stylings can, can use which weapons. So then I'll make my way back to the blacksmithing station. And let's go ahead and make our head mold first. So, so you actually have to go down at the very bottom here. There's a, a miscellaneous tab. Then you'll see modify weapon, head, uh, weapon mold. Okay. So I'll put in the head mold and the appearance compendium. And you can do this in multiple quantities, it would appear, because these are not unique items. And now I have a head mold great axe centaur. It says the name of the race that it now represents. So then I'll go back to two-handed weapon components. Now here's where I'll, sh where I'll show you the bond tipper, okay? What I'll do here is uh, go ahead and drink this bond tipper, and you'll see I now have the, um, the not only the dine buff from my pot pie, but also the wind buff from the bond tipper. So I'll go to two-handed weapon components, weapon head grates, or sorry, it's a blade, it's a weapon blade. No, it's going to be a head. Yes, it's going to be a head. So I'll go ahead and put in the head mold, my four metal bars that I've got prepared, and some ethereal dust. And there we go. Success on that. So now this one has damage as an option. So I'm going to make sure to focus on the damage. And then I'm my secondary focus is armor pen slashing. This is a very, this is on the test server. So my passive skills are like years ahead, pretty much. So so when you don't see this many experimentation points, don't be discouraged. It's just going to take a few months to get there. Okay. Now I'm focusing on damage on this because that's what you should do for any weapon. All of your abilities are weapon damage based as I mentioned in the weapon smithing basics video. The one thing I did get wrong after looking further into it is that if you're making a weapon for a healer, you do not want to focus on the weapon damage. There will be an option for support power. If you use the right materials to get your support power, you want to focus on your support power because healer abilities will be based on the support power of your character. The weapon damage doesn't actually get factored into that like I said in the basics video. So thank you for the comments that uh, pointed that out to me. So now what you'll see here is I turn it up to Are You Insane? You'll see that the final difficulty, they've sort of changed the layout of this. You'll see my overall experimentation skill up here is 111.3-ish. Down here, the final difficulty is 115. But then there's very small, there's a minus 21. A little bit of that comes from my helper monkey minor discipline, but 15 of that is from the bond tippers. If you read it, it says reduces the final experiment difficulty by 15 for your next crafting experiment. So there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, run that experiment. It goes from 5 up to 8 damage. We're going to give it a little polish. Didn't quite bump it up anymore, but that's okay. So now we have our great axe head, great axe centaur. So it's got the, the race appearance right in there. All right, so now that all of our components are done, let's go plug them in and make ourselves a weapon. Advanced weapons, great axe, fantastic. So um, you'll see now that actually that the, the bond tipper buff is gone. It only lasts for that one craft. The, the pot pie keeps going for the whole 20 minutes, but the bond tipper buff only lasts for that one craft. So I'll plug in the head that's got the appearance compendium on it, so it'll have a centaur skin to it, our weapon hilt, our medium shaft and some ethereal dust. Now you'll see we've got these two green boxed optional component slots. One of them is for weapon weights. This is going to add damage but reduce your power efficiency cost. We're going to go into what that means after I craft the weapon and I can show it to you. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Then there's also these hunger shard components. If you've never seen these before it's probably because you haven't been able to harvest them yet. If you look in your passive skills Let's take a quick uh, detour. If you look in your passive skills under the um, exploration tree, you'll notice very early on in this top branch leading up to gathering proficiency, there's plentiful resource hunger shards. This is an important one to have if you want to be able to mine these additives. These come from the hunger shards that appear in the campaign and infected. Infected though, I don't believe you'll get the hunger shards. You have to be in the campaign on the rank eight, nine, and 10 hunger shard nodes. 
If we then go into the excavation tree, there's even um, more options you'll see here. Uh, you need to have 50% of the tree of the excavation tree trained to start getting hunger shard weapon additive chance. This is what you need to be able to harvest these components. If you've got a miner who specializes in hunger shards with this particular skill filled out, they're going to actually have a chance to mine these additives. These additives can either are, uh, add armor penetration of a particular type. This one is armor pen slashing, or they can add attack power or support power. Okay, and there's varying qualities of them as well. So look out for those as your miners start to get into the excavation skill tree. Back on track. Advanced weapons, great axe. Get our components we've already talked about in there. Weapon weight, head, ethereal dust, and hunger shard. And in this case, this is going to add some armor penetration slashing, which is what I really want right now. Uh, looks like I need to make sure to get my bond tipper buff on. Very good. And let's hit assemble. Success, fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure I work on the damage because this is not a healer. And then the stats. Are you insane difficulty? Now this difficulty actually went up. It's up to 125. Uh, luckily with the bond tipper reduction, that brings it down to about 104, which is still less than my experimentation skill. Thank goodness for that. Run that, polish it up. We went from 83 to 118 damage. That's what comes, that's the kind of power that comes with passive skills. And the armor pen slashing that I was focusing on is plus seven with plus 87 attack power. And I wasn't even focusing on that. So that's really great. Let's go ahead and finish it up. Storm steals heavy horse axe because it's a centaur axe. Haha, <laughs> get it? Okay. So first off, let's take a look. So so currently my, my blacksmith here is wearing the axe that by default drops uh, from, from mobs, and the advanced axe. Let's equip the centaur styled axe, and you've got a totally different look now. Yeah, some might think it's better, some might think it's worse. I kind of prefer the default one, um, which is more of a stoneborn style. This one's a little more sleek, uh, more centurion-like, that kind of Roman style that the, the centaurs have, so that's pretty cool. But th that's how you make that happen. Now, Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the weapon weight, okay? So the axe that I'm wearing that dropped off of a monster, it has weapon weight 15. The one I just crafted has weapon weight 96. That is massively larger. Here's where you're gonna see that take effect. If you go to your details page, combat, and scroll all the way down to power modifications, you'll see you have a stat called power efficiency. Many classes have talents that will um, increase this stat. If I take the weapon off, you'll see that my power cost multiplier is very pure from the power efficiency. It's negative 15.99%. That means my powers are reduced in cost by about 16%. When I put my weapon on and it adds the, the weapon weight and the basic attack damage, now it goes it, it goes down technically, right? The, the, the number is closer to positive, but that means my powers are costing more. It's only negative 1%-ish. That means they're only cost less by 1%. Now, if I switch on this new ax, which has a weight of 96, it goes up to 80%. That means my powers are costing 80% more resource. On most classes, this is not worth the damage increase. You would never want this on a healer or a caster because that mana cost is really gonna come back to bite them as say a Stormcaller, a Frostweaver, or a Cleric healer, or even a Druid healer. That mana cost is going to wreck you. Pip-based classes, which are Assassin, Duelist, and Templar classes, instead of costing more resource, your cooldowns become longer because those pips are, are much lower numbers. You can't really mess with those. So instead, they made your cooldowns longer. So in most cases, this weapon weight is not worth it currently with the way the game exists. The only class that I would potentially consider it on is a champion because you tend not to have too many rage issues as a champion once a fight is going and there are a lot of enemies. But even then, 80% increase is still a pretty steep price for a little bit more damage. That being said, these are optional components. It's completely up to you to decide what you want and don't want on your weapon. And that is the beauty of Crowfall Crafting. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope this was helpful. Do me a favor, like the video and subscribe to my channel so you can get more guides and PvP content on Crowfall. And again, if you've got any questions or just want to hang out and chat about Crowfall, come to my stream and I'd be happy to hang out with you there. Until then, stay safe out there.